developers can create bots for Microsoft Teams that display user information using Microsoft Graph. And because users sign into Microsoft Teams via their Azure AD accounts in Microsoft 365, developers can take advantage of this by implementing single sign-on to authorize the bot. Single sign-on authentication in Azure Active Directory minimizes the number of times the user needs to enter their sign-in credentials by silently refreshing the, token, the authentication token. If users agree to use your app, they don't need to consent again in another device and can sign in automatically. The flow is similar to that of Microsoft Teams tab support SSO support. However, the difference is in the protocol for how a bot requests tokens and receives the responses. So in this section, we're going to learn how SSO works and how to create a conversational bot for Microsoft Teams that uses the single sign-on. So we're going to see how to uh, understanding how it works and then also how to configure the bot's uh, OAuth connection settings. Let's start by looking at how SSO process works at runtime and bots. The bot is going to send a message with an OAuth card that contains the token exchange resource property, and it tells Microsoft Teams to obtain an authentication token for the bot application. And the user receives messages at all receives this message at all the active user endpoints. Now, keep in mind, the user can have more than one active endpoint at any given time, and the bot token is received from every active user endpoint. So the app that you're installing in the must be installed in the personal scope for SSO support, not in a channel or a group chat where multiple people can authenticate. Now, if the current user is uh, in step two, if the current user uh, that is using your bot application is using it for the first time, a request prompt is going to be displayed and it's going to request the user to do one of the following things. They're either going to have to provide consent if it's required and handle step up authentication such as two factor auth. Now in step three, Microsoft Teams is then going to request the bot application token from the Azure AD endpoint for the current user. Azure AD is then going to send the bot application token in step four back to the Microsoft Teams application. And in step five, Microsoft Teams sends the token to the bot as part of the value object that's returned by the invoke activity with the name sign in slash token exchange. The parse token in the bot application that is provided is going to include the required information, such as the user's email address. And then from there, the bot framework can step up and use this ID token to obtain an uh, access token uh, using the OBO flow. Now, all Microsoft Teams app that implement SSO must also have an associated Azure AD application registered. The Azure AD app for a bot shares many of the characteristics when used uh, for tab SSO as well. So for example, all of the Azure AD apps used in Microsoft Teams SSO must have a client ID and client certificate or secret, permissions that have been set, and the ability to obtain tokens with the OAuth2 implicit flow, and then the access as user permission that's been defined, as well as the uh, pre-authorized Microsoft Teams clients. So all of these characteristics of an Azure AD app registration are shared requirements when you use uh, when you go to implement SSO for Microsoft Teams with tabs and bots. Bots do have some unique characteristics because of their server-side based interactive experience uh, compared to the client-side nature of tabs. So for example, the redirect URI uh, for, the t for the app uh, should point to the, bot, the Azure Bot Frameworks token endpoint, uh, such as token.botframework.com slash dot auth dot slash web slash redirect. Also, when exposing an API permission such as access as user, the app ID URI should include the string bot ID dash instead of the domain name where the bot service is hosted. So it should look something more like API colon slash slash bot ID dash and then the GUID of the app. Now for a bot to support SSO, you must update its OAuth connection settings. And this process associates bots with the authentication provider, in this case, Azure AD, the Azure AD application associated with the bot, the bot application's ID URI, and all the permissions that the bot needs to obtain the access token for. Now, how do you associate the Azure AD app with Microsoft Teams app? Well, you have to associate it using the manifest JSON file, specifically the web application info object that's inside the Teams app uh, manifest package. There are two parts of this section that need to be updated for your app. The ID, that's the ID of your Azure AD application. It's the same as what you would use in a tab uh, experience. Um, the resource property is the URL of the app or the URI of the app, really. 
which is the same thing as the URI that was used when registering the app in Azure AD. So it's going to look like the token exchange uh, URL that you see here in this slide um, on the screen, where it says API colon slash slash bot ID dash and then the GUID or the ID of the app. Now let's take a look at what the authentication process looks like for your users. The request to get an access token is gonna to involve submitting an HP post message request using the ex existing message schema. So it's included in the attachments of the OAuth card um, object that's been defined in the Microsoft Bot Schema 4.0, and it's similar to a sign-in card. Microsoft Teams treats the request as a silent token acquisition if the token exchange resource property is populated on the card. So for Teams channels, the only the ID property, which uniquely identifies the token request, is honored. When the user sends a message to the bot framework for the first time, they must first consent to the application. And Microsoft displays this consent experience that you see here. It shows up above the message box, and that's the screen, the image that you see there on the left-hand side with a cancel and continue button. When the user selects continue, the following events happen. First, if the bot defines a sign-in button, the sign-in flow for the bot is triggered similar to the sign-in flow from an OAuth card button in a message stream. The developer must decide which permissions require user consent. This approach is recommended if you require a token with permissions beyond OpenID, such as in the case when you want to exchange a token for Microsoft Graph resources. Then, if the bot isn't providing a sign-in button for the OAuth card, the user consent is required for a minimal set of permissions, and this token is useful for basic authentication to identify who the user is. For example, if you want to get the user's email address, the identity provider's object ID, the user's tenant ID, or the user's display name. When building a bot that requires an authenticated user, consider using dialogues. Dialogues provide a state-based model to manage the long-running conversation with the user. The nature of the sequential conversation that depends on authentication makes dialogues very well suited for this scenario. Dialogues simplify the sequential steps of signing in, interacting with the user, and secured resources requiring user and bot authorization, and ultimately signing out. Let's take a look at an example that demonstrates a waterfall dialog. This first step in the waterfall dialog prompts the user to authenticate, and it's doing that with the prompt step. Next, the login step will attempt to obtain an access token using the bot's authentication support. If successful, it uses the access token obtained in the OAuth process to submit a request to Microsoft Graph to display information returned from Microsoft Graph. When you run the bot the first time the user interacts with the bot, they'll be prompted to consent to assign an experience as you saw previously. And once they consent by selecting that continue button, the bot will display information about the currently signed in user. This information was retrieved using the SSO support in Microsoft Teams to obtain the ID token for the currently signed in user and exchange this ID token for an access token and then use that to submit requests to Microsoft Graph. And then finally, when the user submits the message logout, it can complete the, the, the final sign out process.